Google Pixel A series has historically been a highly anticipated device due to its compact form factor, price to performance ratio, great cameras, and the stock Android experience. Now the Pixel 6a is available and it uses the same Tensor chip as the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. However, the main camera sensor is still using the older Sony IMX363. Before we get into it, I want to give a huge shout out to Google for sending me this device to test. However, they did not have a say in this video and all of the thoughts and opinions are my own. Now I'm not going to bore you guys with the specs. There are plenty of other videos you can watch and you can all read a spreadsheet. And since I'm a photographer, I will focus on the camera capabilities of the Pixel 6a and compare Google's budget phone to their most expensive, the Pixel 6 Pro. Before we get into the images, let me know in the comments below. Do you think the more powerful Tensor chip along with Google's computational photography is able to overcome the limitations of the older camera sensor? I would love to hear your thoughts. I've been shooting with the Pixel 6a for the past week and so far I am very impressed. The photos look like your typical Google images with fairly neutral colors, good contrast overall, sharp details, and great HDR. The files also hold up to some post-processing, so you can apply your own style to your photos. But how does the Pixel 6a stack up against the flagship Pixel 6 Pro? Kicking off the POV segment, we are in New York City on a partly cloudy day. This graffiti wall caught my eye due to the different colors, so this was a great shot to see how the different phones render these colors and tones. I like this shot of the guy walking through the frame because it gives some life to the shot and the skin tones are also visible. Looking at these side by side, you can immediately see that the camera on the Pixel 6 Pro is much wider. But I much prefer the image from the Pixel 6a. The colors look more vibrant, the skin tones are more pleasing, and I like that tighter frame overall. Moving on, I saw the statue in front of the restaurant and it was very close to the sidewalk so I had to use the ultra wide cameras for this shot. Now both of these images look nearly identical. The Pixel 6a has slightly more contrast and deeper blacks. But it's so minor and without seeing them side by side, I could be convinced that both of these shots came from the same device. Now I'm standing across the street waiting for some bikes to come through the frame in order to capture that movement. Unfortunately, the biker in both of these shots is slightly blurry, which is disappointing. If it was a low light shot, I would understand the need for a slower shutter speed, but it was still pretty bright out, so the shutter speed could have been faster to freeze that moment. Then I waited some more, but I see the same results here with an even blurrier biker. But otherwise, both of these images look pretty much identical. At this next street corner, I wanted to test out the zoom capabilities. I wanted to see how well the digital zoom compares against the 4x telephoto optical zoom on the Pixel 6 Pro. And I'm just waiting for this biker in red to cross the street. And as he enters the frame, I snap this shot. So after seeing these images side by side, I was really surprised by the results. Of course, the Pixel 6 Pro is still much clearer with that optical zoom, but the image from the 6a holds up fairly well. I thought it would have looked much more pixelated, but it actually turned out better than I had expected. Alright guys, now I'm doing a front video selfie test. Currently, you're hearing the audio coming from the Pixel 6a. Now you're hearing the audio coming from the Pixel 6 Pro. Keep in mind the audio enhancement feature is enabled on both devices. And currently there is a lot of wind as well as car traffic on the streets. I'll be switching between the audio on both devices back and forth so you can hear how it sounds. Judging from the phone screen, the footage from the Pixel 6a actually looks clearer. But I'll have to put them on the computer to say for sure. At this next location, we are at Corona Park in front of the Unisphere. The Mist Garden is a magical spot to cool off and it makes for some awesome photos too. Again, looking at these shots side by side, they look very similar between both devices. And keep in mind that these are shot using the 2x digital zoom on both phones. The Pixel 6a looks slightly warmer in color temperature. And after taking a couple more shots in this location, I'm very happy with the results. Next, I got closer to the Unisphere and I wanted to test the ultra wide cameras for this shot. Both of these images look amazing. I love the dramatic storm clouds in the sky and I love how the globe is lit by the golden hour sunset. You can see the computational photography and Google's magic at work. 
On my way out of the park, I took a video using the Snapchat camera to test the social media integration. I'm happy to report that both of these look really good. Now we're onto some night photography. Here I'm using auto night mode on both devices and it is very dark out. Reviewing these photos, I am once again surprised by the performance of the Pixel 6a. Looking at these side by side, the shots are very similar. Initially, I thought the older sensor wouldn't perform as well, especially in low light conditions. But after reviewing these images, I'm happy to say that it can definitely keep up. When switching over to the 2x digital zoom on both, you can see that the Pixel 6 Pro decided to skew very warm in the white balance. So in this case, I much prefer the cooler tones of the Pixel 6a. As you can see when switching over to that 4x telephoto lens, the Pixel 6 Pro then adjusted the white balance to better match the cooler tones. In the same area, I wanted to take a photo of the dimly lit walkway with the buildings in the background. The Pixel 6a was actually able to process the image a bit quicker. Looking at the results, both are very impressive. The images look so much better than the view I had in real life. I also wanted to test out the portrait mode. I like the bokeh on both, but the white balance on the Pixel 6 Pro was way too warm. Lastly, here's a video comparison using Instagram. You can see the Pixel 6a has some slight stutters. Hopefully this can be fixed in an update, but the image quality on both look great. So after reviewing all of the images, I'm really impressed with the image quality. Maybe my initial expectations were too low from the start, but I'm happy to see that you're not sacrificing too much compared to the Pixel 6 Pro. And unfortunately, you don't get some of the Pixel 6 Pro camera modes like action pan and long exposure. However, Magic Eraser is still available and works just as well on both devices. Cameras aside, using the Pixel 6a over this past week has been a joy. The size is much more compact compared to the Pixel 6 Pro, and it's easily a one-handed device. The back is plastic, but honestly, it feels more solid than the glass of the Pixel 6 Pro. Actually, the entire device just feels more premium. And this may be weird to say, but the Pixel 6 Pro has a hollow feeling, which makes it feel cheaper. In contrast, the Pixel 6a feels very dense and high quality. The screen quality on the Pixel 6a is great, and although I would have loved a higher refresh display, the 60Hz screen is on par with every other 60Hz screen that I've used. The fingerprint reader, like the Pixel 6 Pro, is pretty slow, and some even reported a bug where any finger will be able to unlock the device. Thankfully, my unit doesn't show this bug, but it's still something to be aware of. Overall, if you're looking for a compact mid-range device, this is definitely a strong contender, especially if you want that Google experience with some of the best image quality in this price point. I wish more manufacturers would create a compact flagship device of this size with no compromises. Now, I would love to hear what you guys think. I know some people were disappointed with the announcement of the Pixel 6a, but I feel that it's still worth the upgrade, especially if you can get a good trade-in deal on your old Pixel. Well, that's it for now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, definitely subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.